Good morning. Good morning. Again. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was thinking we were at number we're not number five today, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, number five. Jeez, like milestone. <laughs> we're hitting it. We're hitting it. Yeah. Oh gosh. Getting into the flow of it. I think so. I think so. Despite the uh, the little pose that we that we decided to do during the holidays, which was definitely a good idea. Needed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just too much. Too much going on. So. Um, so yeah, this morning <clears throat> I had a nice little nice little routine going, and when I when I pulled the cards today, I was like speaking in French and just like feeling really playful. And I was just like, I don't really have a question. I just, I just want to pull a card and just one, like just to yeah. do it kind of thing. Um, and it was super neat because I feel like I pulled you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I pulled, I pulled the, and I, I, I really have a hard time pronouncing it. Pallades, Pallades, yeah, Pallades, Pallades. Yeah. Um, and I remember back in the summer when you introduced me to um, this concept and we talked briefly about it. I still mm -hmm. don't really have a, a great foundation of knowledge about it. Um, but I was like, oh my goodness, I just pulled Jess. So <laughs> I'm going to ask her to elaborate a little bit on it um, yeah. because I think it is. I feel like it's a really nice way to start the conversation. Um, yeah. A, because this card has to do with like bringing light to humanity and and kind of a lot of positiveness, but also because I was just like, oh my God, I'm going to see Jess in an hour. Look what I, I picked. <laughs> I was like, this is so cool. I love this. Anyways, um, so yeah, if you, yeah, if you want to help me to remember what this is all about and others maybe they've never heard of it before I think that'd be really yeah neat. okay so um from what I've learned the Pallades is a star cluster in the sky mm -hmm. um a constellation of uh I believe it's seven stars like they call it the seven sisters yep and certain souls originate from this uh constellation this star cluster and I guess to keep it really simple is these particular beings resonate at certain frequencies that correspond to the Palladian constellation. And so it's funny you brought this up because I went through a bunch of notes this past week after our chat last week about like DNA activation and, and I revisited a lot of my notes from my sessions with um, Jamie and um, for listeners, I did like a, like a soul aligning appointment with her and there was a lot of information that came through, but uh, a lot of it makes sense in different intervals. You know, it doesn't always make sense right at the beginning of the session or even months after some of this stuff is like two years old, this information. Really? Uh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, so I went and revisited a lot of it, and um, I had read about the Pallades. I don't think I actually rewrote this down, but the Palladians resonate from 5D frequency upward. Um, yeah, so it's just a particular vibration, and, and from what I understand, it's just as we're raising our vibration to higher levels, gifts that are associated with that vibration can then come through because you're you're like it's kind of like tuning into a radio frequency right it's like if you're tuned in it's like staticky 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 and then you turn into the right station and it's like now you can hear it you know it's, i guess it would be kind of like that so palladians are they say they're very similar to humans like they understand human um what it's the human experience right to experience emotion and to be in this world of um choice and in this world of contrast light and dark okay. um because on the 
some of these higher frequencies, right? It's from what I understand. I don't know. Like this is just stuff from it's my good. brain. It's it's good. That's what I'm asking for. I'm like, I want some stuff from Jess's brain. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> so, yeah, on the higher frequencies, you experience higher love vibrations. But in our 3D Earth plane, you can feel a lot of heaviness and some of these heavier emotions like, you know, guilt, grief, judgment, like all those type, all those heavy vibrations. And so Palladian energies have a good understanding of what that means and to be in a human body and to be experiencing those type of um, things. So what I learned through these sessions with Jamie was, so I'm a star seed and a light being conduit. And so star seed can mean, well, I like thinking of it in the sense of like planting a seed, you know, it's like I've been planted here on earth and to root and ground in order to, I, I think I wrote this, in order to ground, um, to anchor in the light, to anchor in the light. Okay. Anchor in the light that, that the, that the earth or the, the beings of the earth are definitely in need of, but also are capable of receiving if they so yeah. choose kind of concept. Yeah. And I think on some level, every person is a star seed um, and has the ability to access all this stuff. Like, I don't think it's one particular, you know, one particular group or certain beings. It's like, I do think everybody has access to everything, um, but this is just the direction that I've been guided to um, pursue, I guess. And it, and it makes sense in my brain. So that's probably why. <laughs> um, so yeah, the light being conduit is basically making that connection and opening the channel to bring through the the love and the light and the messages and whatever it is. So it, to me, they kind of go hand in hand. It's like rooting into the earth and then also opening the channel so it can all come through. So like I envision you kind of being like this bridge, right? Like you said, like a channel. So yeah, I understand the light coming through, but in your in your opinion, what does the rooting do? What 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 purpose would the rooting have if you're already kind of channeling in and serving others to help yeah. with the love? Yeah. What do you think the the rooting concept is um, is mélange avec everything? Yeah. To keep me in reality, in like this earth reality, I feel the rooting is necessary because I can find myself floating and floating and floating, you know, and the process of keeping the body grounded, uh, I feel keeps me balanced and not too high up in the, in my energy, you know, okay. and because there's nothing wrong with tapping into those uh, energies, right, and going higher and having these potentially out of body experiences and all, all that fun jazz, right? Yeah. But it needs to be balanced with earthly rooting, uh, grounding energy, or else I feel like you can kind of get lost in, the, at least for me, like I can yeah. get lost in the daydream, you know? And, and again, there's times where that is what I want and I want to be walking in this daydream and, and bringing, playing, you know? Okay. And, and I do bring that through, but maybe that's just not what I'm meant to be doing right now at this particular time. It doesn't resonate as deeply with me as like keeping it balanced, right? Like just like, it's fine to have those high times and, um, and, and I enjoy them very much. And, and I receive a lot of that in dreams too. Like I find when I'm dreaming, that's when I go to kind of these real high places. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Whereas like middle of the day, like 
earth, like earth daytime, I feel like I'm very earthbound, you know, it's like, I kind of cycle through it almost throughout the day. That would be, I guess, the seeding part, the star seeding part. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Like, do you want to add anything to that? Because I have some other stuff, but it's more with the DNA stuff. So I can, I okay. can teach on that at another point. But. Okay. No, I, I think I have like a better understanding of like your concept. I think you explained it really good. Um, definitely a lot of visuals. So it's nice. <laughs> um, I, I almost, I'm curious to know if like, if you're daydreaming aspect of it is a way for you to like regain energy. Like it's almost something to fill your cup and then yeah. you're rooting down kind of being in the earthly kind of level is more of just like that's when you kind of give mm -hmm. it sounds like because yeah. like when you said like oh I, I do like being in the daydreams I was just like oh I wonder if like that's where she she replenishes yeah and then the rooting is kind of like where you give back yeah I okay. love that yeah okay. I, I totally feel that mm -hmm. I drew I can't remember if I showed it on here but I drew a little I definitely wrote about it on the blog but it was a cycle I had written about like a um, it was like a diagram, I guess, and there was four. I'm just gonna find it. I have it written in here. But did I did I mention this at all, or does this? No. Okay. I mean, anyways, I I take lion's mane every day, and I feel like it's supposed to help with my cognition. But every once in a while, people are like, hey, "Did you remember this?" And I'm like, "Well, I probably would. Just give me like a couple minutes, and just like let me filter back there." But at the same time, it's just like sometimes I, I listen very attentively and then I can't like bring it back up. Like I can't like recall it back up. Especially you just put me on the spot here too. I'm just like, no, sorry, like, sorry. Like, no, okay, I'm, I'm, just I'm just joking. I'm just joking. No sorry. Not allowed. Not allowed to say sorry here. Okay. <clears throat> this is so this I love the I love this. Okay. So is it is it the oh, right direction? no i've never seen this yeah okay so this is what i drew wow and yeah if yeah wow that totally makes sense yeah yeah i love that you just brought that up <laughs> genius it's like it simple is, right yeah like it gives you direction and like it yeah. gives you a little bit of um like especially like you said if you if your mind kind of wants to slip up a little bit higher if you yeah. if your if your spirit's kind of up there it's like a reminder you're like wait wait no like it's it's you gotta have that 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 time and place to do it or like yeah. i agree you kind of stay up there and you yeah. live a little bit distant from the the reality that your your body's here your physical body's here for yeah, and it, and there's nothing wrong because some people do live in that reality. So it's not like a good or bad thing, right? It's like some people do live in that reality and that is their reality. But I had listened to this podcast and and um, I'll link it below because I, I can't remember the name of all the info right now. But um, this channel, she basically said she was like, you know, a lot of people in in their um, I guess spiritual practice right now are trying to have these out of body experiences and really connect with the ethers and, and all that. But she was like, why would you come to the body to want to leave it? You know, like, oh. like asking yourself that question. And, and, and I loved it because I was like, yeah, like I, so much time I spent trying to, you know, go to these places. And, and again, it was more in dreams too, but in meditation, I would be like, I have to like try and reach this like high high level you know of like whatever it is vibration I guess but she was like yeah it just made me think differently about it it's like I am here to be in the body you know like why mm -hmm. why would I be here otherwise <laughs> and I feel like most of my life that's always been my biggest guide for me is how does the body feel and even before I was really tuned in and tapped in and all that 
it's like, I feel like that was a common question I would always ask myself is like, how does my body feel right now? Or, oh, my body doesn't feel well right now. Like, what can I do to make it feel better? You know, or, oh, my body, this makes my body feel great, right? Like when you exercise, like, uh, oh, my, like my body feels great. The endorphins feel good. You know, it's like, it was always just a very like, um, oh, what's the, it's like a, not a curious, but like a gentle question that I always ask myself, like, like a child, right? Like it was very basic. Like it was just like very simple, you know? Yeah. Um, but looking back now, I'm like, yeah, like I should be like, I understand why I'm asking myself that, you know, it's like, we are in the body or we are meant to be rooted in it. And um, yeah, I don't know. That's nice. Yeah. It's a lot of, <laughs> well, it's good because it feels like if you tap into what the body's doing for me, anyways, it also mirrors what the spirit's doing, what the heart's doing. Yeah. Uh, um, again, like I, I, I'm asking that question more often now. Like it, it hasn't been, I don't think it's been like you where I've always asked that question when I was like, you know, years ago, but like definitely within the last couple of years, I'm like, how does the body feel? How does the body yeah. feel? Like make yeah. sure it's feeling good. Yeah. Um, yeah. But now that I'm opening up to like the other entities, the heart and the soul, it's kind of just like whenever the body's a little wonky, I try to figure out like, oh, is it the heart? Is it the spirit? Is it something else? Or is it just the body? And I just ate something yeah. funky yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. So it's super yeah. fun. Yeah. And, it, and like you said, it's all connected. It, for me anyways, I hope everybody else would agree, but yeah. I definitely find if I'm off somewhere else, like if my heart's really heavy, I can feel it physically. Yeah. And then yeah. it's nice to have that tactile reminder because then I'm going to do stuff in my life to make the heart not so heavy, therefore mm -hmm. generating light, therefore filling my cup, therefore spilling it over and providing others yeah. with some light too, right? So yeah. I like it. Awesome. Cool. Awesome. Um, if I think of anything else about the like Palladian star seed, I'll I'll make some notes and stuff but uh yeah I'm glad you asked that thank you I it when I talk about certain things like this I and I'm not a, I have ideas about what this is but I get almost like shaky you know like my energy gets to a point where I can like and Jacoby's aunt uh aunt Deb she told me once like she was like it's your vibration right it's just it's a it's a particular vibration but it and I don't know if it's something that's like coming through me and then I'm bringing it through you know and it's just a little shaky because it's like higher than my resting kind of like baseline vibration oh. but um I can feel it a bit right now too like as I'm like talking like this it's like I feel it like right here kind of like high heart area like uh yeah so. and I don't know if anybody else can hear it but I heard it when you started talking about it at the yeah. beginning and I was just like I don't know if she's like really excited or really nervous or like I don't know either. I... <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just like yeah. Hey Jess, maybe you should take a breath because magic is real. Yeah. 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 So cool. Cool. Thanks for sharing. Thank <laughs> <laughs> um, I think you're a star seed too, Justine. I definitely feel that with you. And I don't know about if you're Palladian or not, but I said in the summer I thought you might be. I don't know for sure. It's I think you know you you know. <laughs> Yeah, I was talking when I pulled the card, I was talking about it. Um, and I was like, I don't, I don't think I am. I feel like when we had chatted about it in the summer, I was kind of like curious, but then um, I had pulled this card like previously and I was kind of looking at it and I was like, no, like, I don't, I don't feel that connection to mm -hmm. that story. Yeah um but I appreciate it I appreciate what their what their purpose is and stuff like that but I'm just yeah. like hmm, not too not too sure um however there was one in here that I was a little bit more fascinated with because it has to do with Orion's belt and I yeah. do find myself whenever I do stargaze it's kind of like yeah but cool 
I haven't been yeah. to a, a healer or a seer to ask about it. So I'm just trying to just trying to do me, try to yeah. keep it simple. That's, that's cool. Yeah. That's really cool. I, and, and on some level, it doesn't even really matter, right? It's like, what is it that is it means? You know, it's just words and ways to comprehend it. And it's like mm -hmm. you either resonate with it or you don't, you know, and you resonate towards other things. And yeah, it's just uh, it's just words. <laughs> but sometimes it's oh I guess for me most times it's really it's really a good sensation to have that type of like knowing either the direction or knowing what the direction is coming from too yeah um because I think it also helps to raise your vibration so you don't feel like you're just this body on earth like doing everyday stuff and like nine to five and like yada yada. Mm -hmm. um, I like, I enjoy the idea that I'm something more, yeah. right? Yeah. And it's again, yeah. like not ego. I'm not trying to be like, well, look at me. I'm going to do all this. Da, da, da. Yeah. It's more of just like, <laughs> like I appreciate the fact that I have something higher to give. Yeah. yeah. Right. And I feel like if you have, it's like the law of attraction. If you have that mindset and you tap into it, mm -hmm. then I want to, I want to keep putting it out there. Yeah. And then hopefully people will feel it. And hopefully people yeah. will tap into theirs. And it's just like that shiny ripple effect of just like, <laughs> yeah, let's do it guys. <laughs> right. Cool. That's awesome. But I guess in order to to shine, like you're kind of thinking about the DNA and the ancestral stuff like that, I I'm starting to very slowly dive into that and like very slowly. Like I feel like there's probably other things that I need to strengthen um, before I before I do that. But again, I think it's going to be something that's going to be learned and experienced as as like a, a group effort yeah right sometimes yeah. it's like solo is good for certain things but I was feeling this might be a little out of my uh what do they call it out of my expertise right so or you can step into your expertise with friends you know it's like uh, it's together we are stronger than just one you know that type of uh, feeling. I feel that a lot right now, for sure. It's like uh, allowing help and reaching out, the, all these hands that are reaching out to help you, you know, like grabbing a hand for certain things. And yeah, I want to, I guess this is a little bit of a shift, but I wanted to talk a little bit about the solar plexus chakra because um, I had an experience this week with it and it kind of ties into what we were just talking about. And Okay, so, so solar plexus, so you have root, sacral, sacral, and then solar, and then solar plexus. It sits okay. like in the abdomen, uh, kind of where like the uh, diaphragm would be, and that's the yellow. yellow, yellow, yeah, okay. And this ties into part of my reason for wanting to do the uh, the podcast with you and with the uh <laughs> there we go my camera yeah. was blurry I had thought I was like what's going on here can't see myself. okay it's good it's good I was like should I wait yeah I'll wait <laughs> I'm listening I'm all ears so yeah part of the reason I wanted to do this was to help me step into my role as a teacher and this has been a hard thing for me personally to even admit out loud um that I am a teacher and this has to do with my solar plexus I've always felt was, and the solar plexus has a lot to do with self-confidence and kind of like your willpower. And this always felt like a nice outlet for like the throat chakra, but also this has always felt like one of my intentions for it as well, was a platform for the teachings. And when I wrote the books, I felt like it, it was teaching, but it was showing through my own perspective rather than like telling people, right? Like 
you got to do this or this will help you because it's like nobody can help any like you can't manifest for anybody else right so I can't I felt like it was hard for me to say hey this works for me and you should try it you know like I didn't that didn't really resonate with me I liked the approach of being like this is the story this is my story you know and like if if parts work for you then that's great and if it doesn't resonate with you then that's fine so anyways this past week like so last Wednesday we recorded and then we were talking about DNA activating and I came across light language and light language I, I think I'm going to get into that after but anyways I did a, a meditation that was a light language meditation and that night or it would have been I guess the next morning was it usually the first half of the night I'll just like sleep soundly and then usually like kind of the morning half of the night is when I'll like lucid dream or get downloads or like any of that type of stuff yeah for sure I hear you so in the morning dream space I had this energy was latched on to me on my like back and it was like and it was really nasty. Like it was a very nasty energy and it was like breathing in my ear basically. And it was saying like, come on, Jess, you know, like this, like really like freaky, like it was, did not like it. And so I'm like, I'm saying, no, like, no, I don't want this. I don't want this. Right. And then I like, it clicked in my head where I'm like, I got to like release it with love. Right. Like I can't, we've talked about this before. You can't just like push the same energy away. Right with the same frequency. And so then I started like bringing in like, like feelings of love and like saying to it, I love you, but like, this isn't for me, you know, like, I love you, but you're just a friend. Like, you know, like this is like, not for me kind of thing. Yeah. And so then it released. And then I felt this energy come out of the back of, on the other side of my body, on the back of my solar plexus, basically. And the way the only way I can describe it is it was like half ticklish and half really painful. And it was kind of like, if you ever get like um, a massage and they're like massaging in a particular area and they're on your back, but you can feel it like down in your glute or something, yeah. you know, like that type of feeling where it's like, it's like a nerve kind of feeling. Yeah. And it was basically like two big pulls that, and it like pulled this energy out of my body through this, like the back of the solar plexus. And I instantly felt like way better and was like, oh, like, oh my God, like that was way, that was like in me, you know, like it, it was sitting in my solar plexus chakra. Like that's where it was resonating, you know? Okay. So anyways, ooh, like I'm getting worked up talking about it. So I pull this energy out of me. I feel like instantly better. And I wrote about it afterwards and I was like, I didn't want to, I wasn't even sure if I wanted to bring it up today because I was like, again, it's in the past. This has already happened, you know, but I feel like it's tying in really nicely with everything. So I do want to talk about it. And it's like, it's part of the story. So bring it in, you know? <laughs> and um, so anyways, I was, I had heard this thing before and where if you have imbalances in your body and like physical symptoms, if it's on the front of your body, it kind of has to do with like fear of the future. And if it's on the back of your body, it has to do with past. Makes sense. And so when it pulled out of my back in the past, like it was on the back, right? And I was like, oh, this is something from the past. And I felt that way for sure, the way the energy was, like it wasn't somewhere I'm going towards, you know, okay. <laughs> something I'm leaving behind. And um, so I had had a follow-up session with Jamie and she said my solar plexus was underactive and the lingering belief that was there was unworthiness and that was causing like an underactive chakra and so when I had written notes about the unworthiness the thing that came up for me was teaching and it was feeling like I don't want to be telling people what to do you know like I don't like that part of 
I guess, I guess it was myself, right? Like that was something I was having those feelings towards, whatever it was insecurity I guess really is what it, it's like you feel unworthy of sharing knowledge or that like I would always be like you know no one gives a shit what you think you know like that type of thing like who are you to tell people what like those type of things you know like that particular frequency and then you get somebody that works with you on the farm that's just like a little sponge and is asking you so many questions and it's just like can you please teach me more I'm talking about me yes for real though you've been a huge part of it for oh. me <laughs> for real for real like oh wow yeah. okay yeah. i was just trying to joke but thank you no. for that uh-uh <laughs> that's pure truth justine <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Is, yeah am i blushing that's a lot of love there yeah okay so anyways i feel like even how i'm talking today is like reflective of what has been released and I feel like this whole week that has happened has been so busy like I was like I can't I was going through my notes from this past week I was like that happened this week this happened this week like I was like oh my god so much is happening right now and yeah I guess I don't I don't I guess that's it I don't know really where I'm going for the rest of this but this energy has gone um, I feel conf, I definitely feel way more confident in sharing information and, and teaching and being confidently saying I am a teacher <laughs> in whatever form it is, you know? So good. Yeah. <sighs> I love the lion's breath. Um, one thing that like, I remember learning about like just recently is with within like emotions within situations there has to be kind of like that that end process right and everybody kind of has that let go um exercise in a different and shares in a different way so when you were like i don't know if i wanted to like talk about this or whatever it felt like like it's in the past it felt like this is this is like yeah, it's in the past and you're not reliving it. You're like, you're like closing the door now, right? Because yeah. you're sharing it. It's almost like you name it and now it really doesn't have any power because yeah. you're like, you're able, oh my God, I just like thought of Harry Potter for a second. Yeah. Um, because if you like say Baltimore, like he doesn't have the power anymore. Sorry, not yeah. Harry Potter fans. Um, but Every, everything can be Harry Potter. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. So I felt like as you're saying it and as you're as you're teaching through the words, um, I was like, oh, this is like that that last that last step that it needed. Yeah. Right. That last release mm -hmm. for it to really to really let go. And now you have like this new space, this new entity, this new mm -hmm. like. I don't want to say new purpose, because I feel like you were always like you said, you were always purpose purposeful towards the the educating like towards the teaching people but um sometimes you have to like yeah finish the cycle and then it's yeah. like whew, more space and yeah. who knows what that space is going to be filled with next right and it's mm -hmm. obviously going to be filled with positive things because to let go of something pretty heavy yeah that's awesome yeah and i feel like the things are coming like they've come in almost instantaneously like there's like things in the works right now that I felt like we're always kind of there you know and they're always been like we've been like flirting with it you know but I feel like now that there is more space it's like these things are like just I guess in just more clarity or, or just in a brighter focus like thanks for opening the door finally I was waiting yeah, yeah. I was like peeking through the window Tap, tap, yeah. the door and there's like an old an like, yeah. yes an old window where you're like what's in there you know <laughs> you're like you want to come out and play i'm here yeah hang out a little bit oh too much yeah tea. um that's cool um yeah so i I wasn't going to talk about this, but I think that's pretty cool. I had, um, I had a dream 
and it's the same concept, right? You kind of sleep through half of the night and yeah. then you wake up and mm -hmm. then you dream. I had a dream about opening up my root chakra this week. Okay. Oh and God. yeah, it was, it was, it was very vivid. Like I knew exactly what was going on. Um, but what is cool and some people might resonate with this or not, but for me, there's music associated with it. Wow. So wow. it was so cool. So I am very much like I'll play whatever music like I'm feeling like I need, you know, some music mm -hmm. you just it's very loud and delightful and releasing and others <laughs> is like jazzy love and others is like folky, like whatever. Right. I love music. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm going to do a shout out to the band called Cœur de Pirate, okay. the Quebec band. And like in my dream, I'm doing this root chakra opening um, and there's Cœur de Pirate playing. And I'm just like, what? so like, of course, like this whole week I've been playing the band yeah. during like my exercises, during my morning, my morning stillness. And it's super rad because like I I always associated my music with my emotions, not necessarily with opening up the different chakras and everything like that. So I yeah, that's that's basically a, mine's not a very long story, but I found it to be very um very empowering, but also very re relieving to be like, well, you can you can do the meditations, you can do stuff, but for me, I add the music piece mm -hmm. to it and it most likely does something to my vibrations it allows me to open or whatnot um and yeah I just thought I would share because you shared your because you shared yours and I don't like I don't remember having like any kind of physical sensations or anything like that I'm definitely not at the Nevo uh that you practice but uh I definitely I definitely am stoked about incorporating music in this type of entity now like I always I feel like I always did it and mm -hmm. now I'm now I'm like reminiscing I'm like oh right I was playing music for that and that manifested like that and it's just like that's where I can open up my channels is is through is through different musics through different genres of music different oh wow so wow. yeah, I just wanted to share that because if anybody's like um, curious about different practices, like just try music, maybe, mm -hmm. you know, next time you listen to a CD, like take a step back and be the observer and be like, why am I listening to this music? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Super cool. Super healing. Yeah. I, I, I have to add something to this because I, I can't believe that when you said root chakra, so I also had a root chakra opening this past week too. Oh, beauty. And when you, I never associate it with the music, but the day that it happened, I had, I was driving and I was belting, like singing so, so loud and just like really like vibing with the music. And then that night I had, and, and, like you said, we, we experience things differently. And, and I want to ask you about your dream after two a bit more, because I have some questions. So in the dream, I again was faced with something really like a, a fear of mine. And it was, a, it was this like distorted energy and I walked away from it. And then I was like, no, Jess, like you need to confront this. Like, you can't just like keep like shoving it under the rug. Right. I was like, you got to confront this. And so I reopened this like basement door that I had like slammed you know like I was down in this like nasty basement wow. like so I reopened it and looked at this energy and I was like you're not real I love you and just like cleared it and then I felt energy leave my body from the front of my legs kind of like upper middle middle to upper thigh almost kind of going inward a bit and it, and it wasn't nearly as big as my solar plexus release, um, but it did release. And the fear that is associated with this particular energy is always like fear of the future too, which is when I was thinking about the past and future with the back in front of the body and stuff. So 
so anyways when you just said the singing there or like the music I was like oh my god like I totally feel that and music is like one of like such a primal thing for us right when you're talking about like like lower root chakras right it's like I, I even think about like a mother humming right or singing right even if the baby's in the womb it's like they can still feel like the humming and the vibration from it like it's so primal mm -hmm. so I, I, I love that that's yeah I want to ask you about so you've told me about your dreams before and your dreams seem to me like from my perspective they're very vivid like you have very visual dreams where like you are performing let's say like like shaman rituals or like the one you had where all 12 of your guides were like around you in like a ceremonious like greeting or meeting yeah so when you have these dreams do you see yourself through your eyes or do you see yourself like from above or is it just like is it vivid because like when I when you tell me these things I picture it like I literally see you standing there with like like these beings right but what is it like in your dream I'm gonna say I'm going to say that I'm the observer in my dreams, that I observe myself in the dream. It's, but it's also um, the sensations. So I'll feel the sensations and I'll go through the emotions and I'll, you know, I do the fear, or I do the joy or love or whatever. So I'll feel it. But for the most part, I can still see myself in the dream doing whatever the dream is. Yeah. Um, and maybe like now that I'm talking about it, maybe it's like when I feel what's in the dream, I am it and I'm no longer the observer. I'm I'm looking mm. at what's happening and then I'll step away and I'll watch the dream Yeah. and watch it happen. Um, and for me, I almost feel like, because when you talk about your dreams and how you feel like you're a little bit more like in, I want to say like in control, but you have a little bit more say in your, the decisions that you make. Um, I, I don't feel like I'm usually there. Like, I feel like everything just kind of happens. Yeah. Um, I'm sure that there has been times where I've made a decision in the dream, mm -hmm. but I feel like for the most part, it is just me playing out the dream. Yeah. And then trying to make make under, make an understanding of, of what just happened. Mm -hmm. um, which is for me, it's probably a good thing because I feel like in the living realm, I tend to want to plan and control and have that like um that say and everything and and then if I, the dream is more of just like just allowing yeah which feels nice to me to just like surrender it's like I would love to surrender more in in the waking we yeah. the world <laughs> um but the dreams kind of just like just like happen kind of but I I yeah I uh I'm definitely dreaming a lot differently than I've ever since since working at the farm. I'm pretty sure, yeah. right? Like things are things are more open to receive different messages. Yeah, and I'm probably more curious about it. So yeah. I'll most likely try to focus, try to be more of an observer in mm -hmm. the dream rather than just letting it kind of kind of dream out. Yeah. I I know what you mean. I definitely have dreams where they just play out and I'm not in control. Like I don't feel like I'm lucid, right? Like I'm not controlling the dream. I'm not uh actively creating in the dream. It's it's playing out. Okay. Um one of the things that's been on my radar a lot lately is there's this concept that the brain can't tell the difference between waking hours and sleep and like dream life 
like the daydream mm -hmm. and the night dream, they, the brain doesn't tell the difference between the two. Okay. And I've always seen them as such separate things. You know, this is my, this is my nighttime. This is my daytime. And lately I've been feeling this kind of like what you said earlier, the bridge, right? Like yeah. bridging the two. And I think through that is like creating boundaries a bit too with the dream world, because I used to just be like, I just want to like dream these crazy dreams and be really mm -hmm. lucid and like, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, whatever yeah. it is. But lately I've been feeling this like need to really dial in and focus. And this came up this week for me. And as we were talking about um, grandparents and like ancestral lines and, and as thinking about time as linear, right? With ancestral, like the line, the, the DNA line and all that. Um, they say like, you know, a past life could be considered a parallel life because time isn't linear. So you're just projecting yourself into these different times, okay. almost like a, like in school when you had the projector, right? It's like, you can have like a whole binder full of different slides, but at this particular time, you're projecting this one slide. And so I had written this down just to write it, like make sense of it in my own mind, because it's trippy, right? When you're thinking about time not being just like past, present, future, it's just all one. So I had written, so if I've had, Jamie told me I've had hundreds of lifetimes on earth, right? And so- Old soul. Yeah. No wonder you're a teacher. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, continue. So I was like, if I've had a hundred life or hundreds of lifetimes, but time isn't linear, that means that I'm experiencing, I'm gonna scratch out experiencing. Okay. Then that means I have hundreds of lifetimes simultaneously playing out right now, all okay. at the same time. Okay. But I have my projector focused on Jessica right now and this life and what I'm doing right now. And I guess like this week after this release happened, I found myself setting boundaries with my thoughts to the point where I was like, I think this is from a different projection and it's creeping into this one. And I just, it's not that I don't care about it. It's just like, I just wanna focus on this one right now. And an example is I kept having this like feeling of a fire and like, like escaping a fire, like a house burning, you know? And funny enough, like two years ago, around the same time, January, my grandma came to visit me. And I remember walking with her and telling her, oh, like I just, I almost feel like burning all my possessions, you know? And just like starting completely new and just like, and I told her that in Jan, like it was I, I think January, February, it was definitely winter. And I was like, it's funny that it's the same time of year and I'm having these same thoughts. And I went and saw my grandma, the same grandma. I went and saw her this weekend too. And when I got back, I was thinking about the fire and then I put it all together. And I was like, like, what if this isn't even from now, right? Like maybe this is something her and I experienced or are experiencing in this other projection, right? Of like a wintertime fire, whatever it means, losing all your possessions, like kind of starting all over, like that type of thing. And I'm tapping into it because it's kind of like this time of year reminds me of it, you know, because that's when that happened or when it is happening, right? And so I, I kind of like almost put the blinders up to it where I was like, it doesn't really matter right? Like, it's just a thought. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's like, what can I focus on right now? And I've found that that technique this week has helped me really just kind of clear out any of the static, you know, like just get rid of any of the excess noise. That's, it's, it's not a bad thought, you know, but it's like, it doesn't really need to be there, 
you know, if I want to go to that time, if I want to see it, then I'll put that slide up on the projector, you know, yeah. but right now I don't want that up there. I don't know. What do you think about that? Like, I need, I need, <laughs> I need to hear what you think. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that's, I think that's super fascinating and and I've used I've used that um, that explanation kind of like quiet down the noise, narrow your focus, all that good jazz. Um, but I've to be completely honest, I never expressed that that concept of simultaneously being a part of different of different realities yeah um because i always blame it on the overstimuli of yeah. of everyday life yeah so i think i think there's probably both that's happening i think that you know my concept of like oh god like i can only do like when i go on the computer i need to like have a list right because there's yeah. just too much information there's just too much going when i even go outside like big cities are not for me. There's just like too many food options, too many, too many <laughs> energies for like people. And it's just like, oh, la, 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 la. I don't know how to quiet the noise. Um, but the idea of the projection, I'm going to have to feel that out this week because they're, I'm 99% sure that there has been instances where like I was trying to figure out where it's coming from yeah um and it could and it wasn't it like it couldn't have been the external noise mm -hmm. kind of concept mm -hmm. um, I also believe that things happen in cycles yeah. um so sometimes um <laughs> I'm looking at my note right now clear out old mental blocks, uh, rewrite and retrain and rebuild what cycles have repeated, right? So sometimes um, when you feel something and it's like, whoa, I've been here before, or like what you said, like I remember doing this, saying this with my grandma and stuff before, um, it definitely, it definitely should step you back a little bit so that you can observe like what's actually happening. Because again, what if it's something that's blocking your progression forward, mm -hmm. right? What if it's, um, it's, it's, it is in a sense taking energy because your brain goes to that memory or that sensation, which then takes you away from the direction you've been following for however mm -hmm. many years or you've been trying to, to get back on in a more focused state. Mm -hmm. um, so again, I think it's really important to like call it out, to like name it, yeah. you know, talk about it, let it go, uh, figure it out. A lot of people would disagree with me. A lot of people would say like, you don't need to figure out the why, the why doesn't matter. Just figure out the how to, to go forward, how to not be there. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm such a why person. I, I'm like a little yeah. detective. I like to yeah. understand the why so that my brain can process the why, therefore enabling it to release. Yeah. Um, but I think maybe that'll be like my homework for this week and be like, see if, see if there are instances, um, this week that could have, have more of a potential of being a projection. I don't, I feel like you're probably an older soul than I am. Um, I, I kind of get that, that vibe, um, mainly cause when you, when we were conversing in the farm and stuff like that, like I always felt like I was the scholar, right? I was just like, all right, they have so much to tell me, um, lots of wisdom and stuff like that. So maybe I'm not a hundred, a hundred lives happening. Maybe I'm like 15, 20, but uh, yeah, I, I feel like, I feel like that should be a little bit of a, of an awareness practice for this week for me and see, see what happens. Hmm. I, I cool. feel with you is you are um, like I see you as my teacher. Like and and, and we talked about that's confusing. We yeah. can't both be teachers. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you are. It's like 
I think I think I always say like oh like how and and I don't necessarily say like your name or like but you your energy does remind me a lot of times like take it slow you know like be methodical with it like take that extra moment you know like that is and very grounding like I feel like even just this conversation we've had today it's like I can get myself like Ooh, 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 like all the way up here right and then it's like you bring this like grounding like wholesome energy to bring it back down you know and and I think that's why we make a really good team is like we have that balance and mm -hmm. yeah I I don't think the soul ages is really anything it's just like it was again it's a way for me to understand kind of these things I'm feeling um but everybody really is you know times everybody's everything <laughs> you can be whatever age you want you can yeah whatever you think you are you are and, yes um, I 100 percent agree with that yeah 100 percent. but you you are a teacher as well and I feel that strongly from you at least in my view of you and um <laughs> I'm very grateful for all the teachings and 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 a lot of it is again it's quantum right like there's no just because we're talking about this stuff right now doesn't mean somebody listening to it 10 years from now wouldn't feel the same things and receive the same love from it or the same learning or, or entertainment or whatever it is. It's like any intention is timeless and will span across all of it. Nice. Nice. I feel like that's, that's, I feel like that should be the conclusion for today. That's, that sounds very, uh, very loving and very, I don't know, feels, feels good. Did you hear that? Yeah, and, and just the, the feeling, I feel that. Okay. Yeah. All out of all of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, it's good. Um, all right, well, thank you for, thank you for uh, showing up in my, in my spread this morning. My one card, my one just card. Oh yeah, like thank you. Um, <laughs> That's me floating there. <laughs> yeah, and I'm just like, just come back to me. We yeah. need to talk. <laughs> we gotta plant some seeds. <laughs> what else we can do? Oh, come nice. roll around in the dirt and uh, take your shoes off. <sighs> oh, good. Can't wait. I know. I'm feeling it. Okay, well, I left question one of me. Merci. Merci.